I've always wanted to be a poet. A master of metaphors, stretching out my experiences one line at a time. Where a black beret made of young adult angst, love, and lack thereof. I've always wanted to be a poet. Peel off the layers of false identity society has thrown on us. Show them how brightly they shine way before the eight came in. Way before they realized that not all monsters are big and scary. Sometimes the beasts are loved ones in proper attires with bright-eyed smiles and snake-like tongues. I've always wanted to be a poet. A deity of exhortation and all parallels. The one who uses like or as with comparisons but refuses to call it a simile because I'm just so wishy I'm deep. <laughs> yeah, that kind of poet. Creating vibrant imagery for the dark-minded, make canvases for those who are so focused on the brush strokes, cause hope for the cynical and stuck out of all ways. Wanted to be a poet. Peck my unicorns without shame and get head nods from fellow poets with leprechauns in their pockets. Make the pen ink proud of me and the paper pissed at my emotions for sojourning within the four corners so aggressively and potent. Place literary concoctions to the hands of those who know what it's like to have their loved ones tear their hearts to pieces and then ask, who hurt you? Knowing damn well it was them. <laughs> and give them the courage to write their own. Dear God, I've got to be a poet. A master of metaphors with neon syllables on my tongue enticing ears to listen to its life, its luster, back thereof, stretching out my experiences one line at a time. Oh, beautiful. Pull up the mic. Pull the mic a little higher. Is this good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, I can hear you now. We. We walk the same direction, but different sidewalks. We're always in the same season, just different reasons as to how we saw the first snowflake or the first flower bloom or why I'm being pushed by this bully filling wind. We're outcasts that found each other in the middle of our unicorn dragon mission. We're positioned to hold each other's hands like the Atlas guy. I know that now. My rational fears kiss my dreams like lovers on honeymoon night. But you're never frightened by my dangerous hesitations to chase what my heart is meant for. I know that now. I know that you're that confident that royalty such as King David had. The kind that will grab my hand right before I jump into my own chaos and remind me that we are made to burn and revive like phoenixes. Bless. Your smile. Rough cheekbones and dense facial features. Even the Grim Reaper pauses at your knee mug. Oh, but your smile is wealthier than billionaires residing within the fresh breezes of their own islands. Even in the silence of our conversations, I can hear your grin. Here at home, consistency, awkwardness with a short melody of awesomeness, I love you, friend. Empathy heaves in the crevices of your embrace as I preach to you my pessimism like biblical scriptures. You are an elixir of patience and understanding, leaking, overflowing from the tabletop onto my lap. No need to clean this up with stain, please. Stain. Soak in. With your silent declarations of love, I still wonder how you preside amongst my core with confidence, accepting all my flaws like gold and killing my doubts with truth. I hope fables are birthed about us. Friend, united we are unicorn dragons that can disintegrate galaxies if they ever come between us. And we, we taste like victory before the sun even rises. We are blatant weirdos that chastise insensitivity and grieve when our favorite characters and books die. We are the heroes of our imagination. We are the story behind exhortation. And oh, how I love you, friend. Listen, Lady Phoenix. Don't smile because you are uncomfortable. Don't laugh to prove you are unbothered. You are valuable enough to be bothered. You can look at a nasty utterance at the lips and call it inappropriate. You are worthy. Just as worthy as a person's feeling tastelessness, you are worthy. When your dreams are equal to a man's, but you're told to take your place and be humble. When you're rebuked to sit back and let him achieve dreams so big, constellations gossip about it. Gospel about it. Remember, 
your vagina wasn't involved in the matter of your purpose. Your soul shook you to your core while you were still sleeping, painted pictures in your daydreams of being a lawyer, a badass with a smile. Remember, your vagina wasn't involved in the matter. Listen, Lady Phoenix. Snatch your dreams without feeling the need to justify. Your crown is reason enough to snatch the stars from the sky just so the next generation can see hope during the darkest moments. And during the moments when you're one of the six brown people at your job, and your cubicle happens to be surrounded by co-workers who crack tasteless jokes and justify themselves by saying, well, everybody's racist. And you want to explode from the ignorance. True through the privileged tongue and cheek, the half half empathy, empathy for different kinds of beautiful and spit them out. And you're torn between calling them out professionally and appropriately, only to be seen as the angry black woman, or say nothing, and allow them to believe that their poisonous preference of humor is okay, no matter what you do. Don't smile because you are uncomfortable. Don't laugh to prove you're unbothered. You are valuable enough to be bothered. Just as valuable as a person spewing tastelessness, you are worthy. When waking up with a desire to bury the sun, because the daylight is just too damn hard to face, and it's just too damn hard to place your cold, hard feet on the floor. Listen, Lady Phoenix, you're meant to be you, just you. Your crown is reason enough to snatch the stars from the sky just so the next generation can see hope during the darkest moments. I was in my pinstripe suit walking up Fifth Avenue during the midday. All eyes were swayed on me, and I can see my soft chasse and mellow flow had the fellows want to do a no-show at their jobs. I was like a bird flying high in the sky into an actual bird flying high up in the sky, poop on my head. <laughs> I saw my crush across the street, and he said, Oh, snap, Jazzy got pooped on. <laughs> I decided at that very moment, at that very moment, that I'd live in a cave and change my name to Dave Lancaster. Yes, Dave Lancaster. <laughs> I grew up forbidden to listen to secular music. So I snapped my fingers to Billie Holiday in corners, shook my shoulders to the Fugees discreetly, and wiggled my widow hips timidly to the Red Hot Chili Peppers. My forbidden love was dancing. To kiss the ground with the pitter-patter of my feet, arms flailing rebelli rebelliously was peace to me in a heart-shaped bottle. I was madly in love with the ungodliness, I suppose. The beats made my face light up like I was attempting to beat Chris Griswold's record. One night in 95, as my father was driving me to my grandparents' house, I remember kicking my feet and giggling under the passing street lights. No, they were spotlights, highlighting my big twists and pastel colored barrettes, shaping to the underbeat of a Biggie Smalls record. My daddy glanced for a moment and smiled. His eyes went back to Bay Ridge streets. Smile so frozen on his face he was proud, bopped his head too, verbally underlined my moves. Giggling, he said, all right, princess, you're getting down. Suddenly, I froze. Shoulders raised up, hands gently crossed over my thighs. I thought of my dancing prohibition at home and sighed. His smile never left. Whenever I made decisions based on my heart's desires and my love for all, he smiled. When going through animosity for being me without shame, he smiled. He smiled at my early beginnings of knowing what this life is all about. There was this obnoxious confidence that coated her sweetly selfless heart, and I admired it from afar. Head lowered in a book, my eyes snug glances at her fierce hands, I'm sure it felt like 30 years of nurturing and 45 years of self-loving. I didn't need to know her to get to know that she's been introduced to the secrets of quiet summer nights and the flinging off of grudges like tightly strapped bras. She knew magic. 
fairy kisses on her nails, wands tied to the ends of her braids, eyes brightly honey hazel hoisting unspoken syllables that can serenade grizzly bears out of hibernation just to hear her speak. That listened. Deeply engaged and freeing her friend without having to cast any spells, she speaks. She speaks fables we're all afraid to face, lips shining glitter and fantasy she utters softly. My father was the first one to break my heart and he was the first person I forgave. I didn't need to know her to get to know that she burned brightly hundreds of times and laughed within her own ashes. Her giggles were victorious, arms flapping rapidly after every sentence she proclaimed of forgiveness, heartache and mystics of time. She'd been magic. 